Remember this poll? I endured 13 weeks just for you guys. Basically, the GCPD chase a bunch of teenagers around town who are trying to pin the death of Bruce Wayne on a nursery rhyme. Let's go. A group of teenagers break into a multi-billion dollar company simply by walking inside. They find an already opened safe and only notice the giant broken window when a helicopter shows up. They've been framed for Bruce Wayne's murder. Wayne's adopted son Turner Hayes is a made-up character who accidentally discovers the Batcave. But first, he's going to be discovering a jail cell because he also got mixed up in all this. He meets the other main characters, Harper and Cullen Rowe, and Joker's daughter, Duella. Robin helps them to escape, and Duella's freaking out at the Court of Owls symbol. Due to a shortage of older British male actors, they made up another character named Cressida Clark, and she burns Bruce's will. The Bat Brats believe Bruce's journal may contain more information on the mysterious Court of Owls, and possibly instructions on how to defeat the final boss. And boy does it have a lot of pages containing spoilers for the later episodes. The Court of Owls has sent their assassin after the kids, and they escape the first of many encounters with a Talon by escaping. We get more confirmation that Cressida's evil, and Stephanie also gets arrested because all the cool kids are doing it. Brody takes the fall for her and gets out of jail for free by doing something called being rich. The journal mentions the name Alan Wayne, and Cullen volunteers to break into GCPD for more information. Whoa, where did he go? A Rolex would pair nicely with their outfits, and since Duella couldn't decide on one, she grabs them all. Harvey announces he's running for mayor, while the current mayor meets his untimely demise. A clue falls onto another clue, revealing Bruce rewrote his will. Turner returns to Cressida asking for that piece of paper, but all he finds is how evil she is. Robin joins him and together they complete their weekly escape from a Talon challenge. The Talon knife supposedly belongs to a dead guy, and they later confirm there is indeed a 130-year-old man running around Gotham dressed in a ninja suit stabbed people. But how? Rich man Lincoln March announces he's also running for mayor, and Harvey doesn't recall asking the deceased mayor for his keys. Through Cressida, the Gotham Knights get a lead on the Court of Owls by getting a lead. They find a ledger which could potentially prove the court's existence. Harvey is assured he doesn't have identity dysmorphia, then he wakes up beside his ex-girlfriend and the wife of the man he's running against in the next scene. At school, Stephanie tries to play it off cool, and Carrie's mother finds out she's practically donating to the school because Carrie's been skipping classes. Of the 52 trillion books ever written, only one of them can crack the ledger's encryption. Cullen dusts off a random book and it happens to be that exact one. Before Joe Chill's execution, he claims the court framed him for the Wayne murders. He's taken away before he spoils the second half of the season. Carrie gets grounded for skipping school, and they catch Lincoln rolling into the hospital after a Talon poked him through the chest. Spider-Man has infiltrated the DC Universe to steal paintings like the menace he is. They figure out the paintings are connected to Alan Wayne, and off they go. Turns out it's the new police chief, and the court's blackmailing her into doing their bidding. They steal the painting for her to rescue her family. Rebecca summons Harvey because she's afraid to answer unknown callers, and they could both use some late-night exercise. The girls learn about a secret sauce keeping the Talon alive, and the court burns the painting to uncover a fireproof map. Thanks to an extensive watch collection and some CGI, the Gotham Knights find out the court is hosting an evil bad guy party. At said party, they learn the map points to something called Electrum, the secret sauce keeping the Talon alive. Duala shoves the map up her… dress, and they catch Cressida facing execution for not being evil enough. Turner saves her life for about 5 minutes, until he's apprehended by the Court of Owls leader Lincoln March. Stephanie's dad is more worried about social media than his own wife, so she takes things into her own hands by flushing away her mother's problems. While the Bat Brats are busy guilt tripping each other about ditching Turner, Cullen pulls a Star Wars and they secure themselves some Electrum. Their peanut brains couldn't think of another way to save Turner, so they give the final boss what he wants. Lincoln does his due diligence and after using the voodoo magic of Electrum to heal Turner, he passes out. Harvey's got some serious mental health issues, but rather than seeking help, his Gen Z peanut brain thinks it's more important to capture it on camera first. Looks like his other half had the same idea. 
Luckily, WebMD has a page on Electrum, and it says they need to perform a blood transfusion on Turner before he dies from radiation poisoning. Carrie confirms Batman was responsible for turning him into an orphan, then she convinces her mother to save Turner's life. Before jumping out the window, she goes, Hey mom, I'm a superhero, please don't ground me again. Brody learns the truth about his evil dad, but he didn't learn about his evil mom. Stephanie finds out she's into girls. That's okay because Duella's dying to hook up with him anyway. Elsewhere, Harvey serves justice to himself. Duella's mother shows up for the big reveal, and we find out Harvey Dent is her father. I meant he's Duella's father, not the mom's. Her evil mother persuades her to pull the trigger, and Harvey survives by surviving. Stephanie's father was busted for seeing an unlicensed street pharmacist. Since the show's almost over, she gives up on her family. The lovebirds head to a club to touch each other, and they finally get together. Their evidence of an evil bad guy party is sitting inside Lincoln's drawer. They retrieve said evidence and find Brody trapped inside a coffin pumped full of Electrum. The newly elected Mayor Lincoln Marsh is celebrating his victory when Rebecca shows up with an army of talons. She calls him stupid, poisons him, then takes the crown of final boss for herself. The Bat Brats arrive a little too late, but just in time to get framed again. Elsewhere, Harvey discovers Rebecca's evil origin story. He's been sleeping with an 18th century witch. Turner's parents were Henry Ducard's assassins, and Batman defended himself a little too well. The main characters get free by getting free to rescue the GCPD from the Talons. Rebecca is so obsessed with Harvey, she's willing to blame the destruction of an entire city on a teenager with daddy issues, just so she can run off and live happily ever after with Harvey. But when Harvey doesn't believe in fairy tales, she splashes him with a supervillain starter pack. The Gotham Knights arrive to foil her overly complicated plan, but Brody defeats the final boss all by himself. Turner's peanut brain turns around for his dad's journals, and Wayne Tower collapses on him. The Bat Brat's been cleared of all charges, and the Gotham Knights decide to stick around. Harvey spirals down a path of evil, and Turner's taken to Henry Ducard who tells him the show's been cancelled. This probably isn't quite how you remembered it, but it's probably close enough.